Hi, everybody. I'm so excited because this is finally going to be a short video. In fact, it's going to be so short that I can just waste a little bit of time here and it'll still be one of the shortest videos I've ever made. Okay, now let's start the video. The y-intercept of a function is simply where the function crosses the y-axis. So, where are all the y-intercepts of these functions? Remember, the y-axis is just this vertical axis over here. The y-intercept is simply where the function crosses the y-axis. So here it crosses right at this point, which seems to be zero, first of all, on the x-axis, and it's right between one and two, right in the middle there on the y-axis, so that would be 1.5. So the y-intercept for this graph is 0, 1.5. Now again, where does this line cross the y-axis? Well, it crosses right over here, and what is that point? That is zero, because remember, x is 0 over here, and y is negative 2. So for all of the y-intercepts, the, the first number that you put here is always going to be 0, because along the y-axis, x is always 0. For every point, even though these are not actually the y-intercepts here, any point along the y-axis has an x value of zero. So the y-intercept always starts with zero. Okay, now what about this one? Where does it cross the y-axis here? It crosses it right over here, and that would actually be the origin. That would be zero, zero. And by the way, a function does not have to be linear. Uh, for us to figure out where the y-intercept is. So for example, over here, this is clearly not a linear function. We have this crazy curve here, but it's still the same principle. The y-intercept is simply where this crosses the y-axis, and that would be right over here, and that would be the point zero, negative one. All right, now we're going to be talking and dealing mostly with y-intercepts. But you could also find the x-intercept just as easily. So for example, for this graph, this would be the x-intercept. So that's where the graph crosses the x-axis over here. And what would that point be? That would be, I didn't draw it very well there, but that should be exactly halfway between 4 and 5. So that would be 4.50. Notice that for the x-intercept, the y value is zero because everywhere along the x-axis, all of these points that I'm putting here on the x-axis, all of them have a y value of zero. Okay, so for the x-intercept, it's always zero. This graph does not have an x-intercept because it never crosses the x-axis. For this one, the x-intercept would actually be, so where does it Here's the x-axis, right? So where does this graph cross the x-axis? It crosses it right over here. So here, the x-intercept is exactly the same as the y-intercept, which is the origin, 0, 0. And here, this graph actually has two x-intercepts. That seems to be, I don't know, let's say about approximately negative 2.70. And this one looks like it's approximately, just eyeballing it here, let's say 4.4, whoops, 4.40. Okay, so that's the x-intercept. For the x-intercept, the y value would be zero because everywhere along the x-axis, the y value is zero. But we're mostly going to be talking about the y-intercept. And for all of these y-intercepts over here, you can see that the x value is always zero because again, everywhere along the y axis, x is always zero. For example, this point, even though it's not the y intercept of this function here, I'll just give an example. What is this point? This point is zero, six. 
Okay, what is uh, this point over here? Again, this is not the y-intercept, but just another example. This is the point zero, negative five. So everywhere along the y-axis, the x value is zero, including at the y-intercept. So your, your first number is always going to be zero for the y-intercept. Okay, and that is it. I made a video under 20 minutes long, yes! Bye-bye, have a good day.